Well, gentlemen, I've got a treat especial for you guys. In here is brand new, never even been hooked up. Minty Mint, brand new Texas Star 667. This always takes me back whenever I work on one of these. I remember when I was a kid, if you had one of these, your wanger was pawed me while I picked this thing up. It was that big. I mean, it. It takes me back. There used to be this guy in town. His first name was Frank. He went by the handle Duck Hunter. And uh, he had himself a Texas Star, Sweet 16. And he was way bigger than the rest of us in town. We just recently reunited. He, uh, he's one of these guys who was kind enough to take pity on me when I was a kid. He gave me this broke, it was like a black cat or something. It was a old watt meter that he had. It was broken. And I thought I'd be able to fix it, and I told him I'd be able to fix it. And it got over to my place, and then it got taken apart. And I'm not going to even lie, what really actually happened was my grandmother came in and cleaned, uh, cleaned the bedroom. Remember, this is like when I'm 14, 13, 14 years old. And uh, she came in and cleaned my bedroom while I had all these different projects where I had parts taken apart. You know, stuff taken apart and parts and piles all over the place. A little pile for this, a little pile for that. All the screws and well, she came in and she threw most of that away and then she got in there with a vacuum cleaner and went in there sucking up parts. And Man, I had to cut the vacuum cleaner bag open and get in there and pick all the screws out of everything. I never did find all the parts for everything. It was a mess. Oh, I was so mad at her for that. But one of the things that got sucked up was all the parts for this meter. And so I was never able to repair the meter, nor was I able to, ever able to return the meter. Oh, this thing is brand new. So not here too long ago, he reached out and uh, he ended up moving away and I wasn't able to get him back the meter. So needless to say, fast forward 35 years later, he is still very much alive. He's still very much in radio. He's still very much having fun. And uh, he reached out and we started talking. And I thought, my God, you know what? I'm going to make this situation right. So over on the shelf over there, I bought all these watt meters, all these bird watt meters from this place down in Arizona one time. And I went over and I found him a really nice bird watt meter. And I got his address and I sent it to him as a I'm sorry, thank you note. I felt bad. But... I wanted to make the situation right, and he's such a nice guy, he would have probably not taken a check or money, but hey, if your buddy sends you a free Bird 43 watt meter in the mail, you better accept it, right? <laughs> so. All right, so we got ourselves a bone stock, Texas Star 667, um, one of the newer models, because it's got the MOSFET final section in it. It does have the later generation DEI 2879 20 DO8s in it, which I can work with those parts, but this MOSFET driver section, no good. So number one failure point in these amps, period, bar none, hands down. So, you know, let's say the MOSFET section has got to come out. I've got to create, you know, like a 2290 or a 454. We'll probably put a 454 in here driving these four other transistors and do ourselves a little bit of a power wire upgrade. But as you all can clearly see, this thing is in minty mint condition. Like I said, we'll upgrade our power wires We'll pull, pull this very prone for failure driver section out. And we'll give it a little bit of a tune. So let's do the driver section first, which is going to be the most time consuming bit of this process. 
But before I run away, I want to say, you know, this is kind of brilliant on um, their part. When they weren't able to get a driver transistor that was to their standard, because, you know, for years they used a 2290, they had to come up with something else. So they've got two RF520s, and they used the stock mounting holes for the 2290s to mount up the RF520s. And this probably wouldn't be that bad of a setup if they would use a higher quality transistor. But yeah, that's, that's just a bomb waiting to happen right there. So, okay, let's, uh, yeah, I'm just saying, let's give them credit for a semi-decent workaround. It's unfortunate that the workaround does not work that well. So let's go ahead, let's rip this thing down. Let's get this changed out. We'll be back. Well, here we go. So we pulled the RF520s out, replaced it with a MR454, which will do more than a 2290 for drive. Two 104s, three 104s, uh, 23 puff worth of capacitance, 1,000 puff, metal clad. Um, got our flyback circuit set up. Our 23 puff worth of capacitance here. This is a thousand puff capacitor here, and I might need to drop that down. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to bring that down to about 620 to well eight, eight and some change, maybe down to six. We'll see how it does in, in testing. But for the most part, that's now done. Stripped out all the power wires. I'm going to put bigger upgraded power wires on this thing. Do the power upgrades on the inside, and we'll give her a go. Simple, easy peasy take out old bad reliable or not reliable and replace with good old reliable so give me a minute let's get some power wires done okay so driver section done power wires are upgraded let's go test amp on preamp is working shut the amp back down let's go over here and over here on the far right hand corner, we've got a thousand watt slug and PEP. One in the middle is a thousand and average or bird. And a five watt slug and reverse back from the bird, 10,000 watt dummy load. We're resting at 15 volts exactly. When it comes underneath load, the power supply is dropping to 14.5. So just like what you would see in your vehicle. Head one, two. We're putting a whopping 25 watts into this amplifier. That's two five watts. Head one, two. So we'll go ahead, we'll push the button, turn the 667 on. Hello. Hello. Just a scooch over 600 with 25 watts of drive. It's working beautiful. Input tune. Hello. 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 Nothing there. Pass through tune, that's for the amplifier off. Head o one two, head o one two. Beautiful, nothing there. Back down here. Whoop. Okay. So, we're gonna back this out a little bit. And we're gonna keep an eye as we move through all of our modes of operation on the amp gauge and on the power. Let me set the amp back a little bit. All right, so, amp on, on high. Hello, one, two, that's on AM, 50, 60 amps. Remember, that's an RMS meter. That's an RMS meter. Hello, 50, 60 amps, okay. So now, we're gonna engage delay, and we're gonna go to sideband. Hello, one, two, dial a watt. Hello, one, two. Low, basically, medium. Hello, one, two. And then on high, hello, one, two. 70 amps worth of draw. So, I still say it needs a 100 amp power supply because this is an RMS, this scale here. But, hello, one, two. 
620, 630 watts. We'll bring our dial watt into play. Hello, one, two, down to 500. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. That's working perfect. And then sideband delay, which would be medium. Hello, one, two. Good deal. <clears throat> And it'll run like that forever. This is not a high drive amplifier. You cannot put your striker 955 or 655 or any of those types of radios into this thing. I get this a lot. Well, I had my dead key way down there. I had the dead key down around a watt. Yeah, but the peak power was still peak power, right? Well, yeah, I guess you're right. This is a 35 watt max amp. No more than 35 watts max, max. Well, this brings us to the end of this story. Each story is unique and special into themselves. Each amplifier is its own special little treasure. This is an amazing amp. As far as condition goes, it is a 10 out of a 10. It is literally brand new. I don't believe this thing was ever hooked up or keyed up or attached to anything or ever even run. Aesthetically on the outside, this represents everything that Texas Star comes to stand for today. But now that I've been through it, I think it's going to be a lot better of an animal. The only other thing I'd like to see done to it if the person that purchases this thing wants to have done is we put a fan on the heat sink. I think that that's fairly important to do. I mean, this has got a lot of heat sink underneath it, but it works so much better and they last so much longer if you put a fan on it. It really does. We're gonna ask 750 for this. Um, that includes the ride. These things fit pretty well inside of a flat rate box, so. 750 out the door and down the road and away off to the races you go running. Uh, the Inventorable Texas Star. 667. So, on that note, gents, I appreciate you. I say thanks for tuning in and watching. You guys know the drill. First one to call, first one to text, first one to reach out, gets it. That's that. Big shout out to XS Siglent, McMahon, Coaxial Dynamics, Bird. And I cannot wait to start saying the last one because we've got a new. Got a new sponsor coming on board here, and I think it's going to be somebody that's going to be very beneficial for you guys to work with. So, on that note, more to come. Talk to you guys. I'll see you. Click, click.